My uh, first question to you is, now that you have broken out the Buddhist, I know you kind of answered that question, but really the quick version is, uh, what is the, the conflict between you and Spartacus? Your missions are on the surface the same, but underneath are very different. How are you playing that? Well, you know, in season two, um, We've just broken out of the Ludus, and Crixus wants to go and find Navia, and Spartacus wants to go and kill Glaber. <laughs> so they've, they've got they've got uh, conflicting interests already. And if everybody knows, you know, season one well enough, you know that uh, Spartacus and Crixus have. Uh, you know, a, a wonderful time at disagreeing with each other. So, we, we've got that great drama in, the, in in this in this season. You know, driving it through again. You know, uh, I know that there was a moment at the end of season one where where you know Spartacus and, and Crixus united. But you know, it's 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 uh, in an ideal they unite, but you know, in practicality they're two different people. And it's and it's and it's, and it's a, I think it's a wonderful brother story. You know. Uh, uh, you know, it's wonderful when you have two two men who who are like brothers, and yet it's it all, it goes back to Cain and Abel. It goes, you know, it's throughout history, this sort of a symbolic story, and it's and it's and, uh, you know the writers the writers deal with it really well. They, they they keep on they keep on making pressure in there, and it keeps the drama happening in the show. You know, but it's, but it's a true relationship. It's a true relationship when you know somebody. I mean, sometimes you hate somebody. And if you hate that person and you can form a friendship with it, with them, usually that friendship goes so much more into the into the opposite direction. You know, you, if you hate somebody, you learn to love them. You love them so much more. If you just like somebody, you, you sort of tend to only just like them. You know, it's 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 turning it's turning things upside down that, that really sort of reveals, I think, realizations in human nature, knowing that you're completely wrong, and then learning, you know, the opposite. Yeah. Uh, the, your character Crixus started off in season one very much kind of uh, almost an animal, but then once he met Navia, he completely changed his being. Uh, how has that changed how you play the character? Well, you know, Crixus was a fighter, you know, who had to kill and maintain a championship title in order to exist. Uh, he didn't like that position. He did it as a necessity of survival. Uh, Navia was the first person to truly look into his heart and ask him who he was. Uh, so, you know, in, in playing that and those stages in, in the storyline, uh, you know, I resisted any any opportunity that was given to show Crixus had a heart. I kept on holding it back and holding it back, and it was well paced in the storyline and the drama. The more I held it back, you know, the longer I held it back, and I guess the audience started to feel it was coming forward. You could tell they wanted to change with the character. At first, they just, you know, I played I played Crixus in a way that I thought that I wouldn't like a person, but it was it was ba it was the way that I played Crixus was based upon a school friend of mine who who was actually my worst enemy at school, and I hated him, and I ended up in a car accident. And this guy ended up in the hospital, next to my hospital bed, and he and I became best friends. And this concept of having someone that you hate, because you see them and you think they're, they're just your enemy, but then just in a moment of change, it ended up this guy had lost his mother when he was young, and, and I actually did myself. And he, he and I became the best of friends. But at first, we we, we hated each other. It's, it's 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 like. But anyway, I base I, I base my my acting on Crixus upon that storyline for my own, you know, school years, and it worked really well. At first, I started playing this very obnoxious character, and my producer was going, "Manu, what are you doing? I, nobody's going to like this character." And I said, "Hold on, just hold on. Let me let me play him." in a way that nobody likes him, that he's just obnoxious. Because if you don't like him, when you start to peel away that bullshit to the point where the human starts to show, you'll get this huge relief and you'll start to associate and then you'll really like the character. It was it was kind of a tool that, you know, that we used during the first season. And then when they gave me the prequel, we sort of th threw it all away and went back even further in time and, and played a very, you know, a very vulnerable uh, character who had just come out of the mines. 
and had long hair and didn't even know anything of the gladiatorial world and that flipped it in another direction. Now we're going into another season that's more about it's it's more about, you know, Crixus is starting to use his mind. But he's also starting to use his heart. And he's also a very dangerous fighter, you know, and has those skills. So how he moves forward now is, is, is a mixture of those three things all combined. But, you know, Crixus isn't alone in his journey. There's, there's a bunch of writers back at the Star Studio who make us do crazy things. <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this twists and turns. And Thank you very much. That was a very long explanation. <laughs> I appreciate it.